Hello, everybody. Welcome to webinar number three of Filmpreneur. Man, time is flying right now. It's just, to me, it's, it's kind of nutty how, how quickly this is going. We have two more webinars to go, and then we're going to be together in Mexico. And you know what? That rhymes. We have two more webinars to go, and we're going to be together in Mexico. And I, I am legit excited because we are in round three. This is our third webinar um, of Filmpreneur. And what this means is we've got two more to go, and we're going to be hanging out together in Playa Viva, Mexico, which I am just over the moon excited for. I'm excited for a, a number of reasons. One um, is to meet you all in person and for all of you to meet. A lot of you I know already. Uh, some of you I don't. And uh, it's going to be just really cool to, to increase and build our tribe out uh, in, in much deeper ways and in ways that we know that over the years as we grow in our businesses and our storytelling businesses that we're going to be able to grow together and connect with each other, work with each other. So I'm legit so excited for that. Number two, I'm excited that all of you, and I want to say thank you, much, much gratitude for all of you for coming on this first beta journey with me, because what you are doing is you're essentially helping me build this course for other students. And as a reminder, as beta users, you've got lifetime access to however this course evolves. There's going to be tons more content that goes into here over the years. And uh, you are my founding team. So thank you again for giving me um, your trust in this. So really, really stoked about this. And third, my gosh, it's been one of those winters and I am, I'm ready for some Mexico uh, sunshine. I hope all of you are as well. Tonight, the agenda. We're just going to quickly go through module four, the sense of an ending, module five, out of this world, module six, the ocean of inspiration. I want to talk to you, about, I want to show you, in fact, uh, the film teaser of one of the films that we're going to showcase at, uh, on the beach. Uh, I play Aviva. We're going to show a few films, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be really special. Um, we're going to bring Elaine back in uh, to talk about logistics, and we're going to meet a few of the new uh, the new faces. Every single week, we've had this uh, phenomenal opportunity to um, you know to to meet new people who are coming on, and this is a really dynamic group of people that we have. Um, at the end of this uh, webinar, we are going to just uh, do some questions. So like last week and the week before, I, I like to start with a special, uh, a special famous quote. And this week, the famous quote that came from our Facebook, our, our uh, private Facebook group, came from this gentleman. And this gentleman is Mr. John Simon. John, okay, I'm going to read your quote, John, and then be prepared, like I told you last time, Put a shirt on if you need to, because I'm going to pull you on in video in a sec. So I want to hear more of what you're talking about here. So the quote of the week this week is, pick your investors as carefully as you would pick your partners. John Simon, the year was 2008. Uh, John, that was uh, an epic uh, <laughs> an epic quote, my friend. Got that out of um, a conversation that we were all having in uh, module three, I believe it was. So John, I'm going to uh, bring you in. John, why don't, why don't you tell us a little bit about, um, yeah, about that quote. And while you do that, I'm, I'm actually gonna go full screen again on this amazing picture I found of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, t t t tell us what you're thinking when you, when you posted this on the Facebook. Well, I mean, I was thinking from, from personal experience where um, I've worked in companies where you, you've had partners in the business who worked in the business and were investors. And I've had companies where you had investors who weren't uh, op operative in the business. And you have to remember that the motivations can be very different for them. So the ones that are in the business, obviously it's their job and, th and they're looking for the success of the company and you know, paying the employees, paying themselves, and sometimes don't have the same focus on the overall results of the company and driving shareholder value. Whereas an outside investor who isn't you know, working day to day in the company and driving value from a, a paycheck, for example, you know, is looking for shareholder value and decisions that drive shareholder value in the company and make their shares more valuable. So there, there can sometimes be a conflict. And of course, beyond that, even with investors, if you have investors, you run into the company who don't um, agree with your goals, your objectives, they can become very problematic at the board level and really cost you a lot of money, time and effort and uh, emotional challenges if, if they decide to, because they have a legal right to as a shareholder in the company. 
Amen. Well, John, thank you so much for sharing that, man. I think that was, uh, that was a really powerful theme that we were talking about on, on the Facebook. And in that, in that conversation, we had the opportunity to, uh, you know, to get other, other perspectives as well. And, you know, in, in, this, in the spirit of, of, uh, of this uh, webinar style of me just yanking people in, <laughs> I'm going to do that. Um, Elaine, I'm, uh, why, don't you, why don't you share just a, a, a quick little discussion on that as well, where you may not have been, you know, according to the Facebook uh, comments that you put, you may not have been working with investors per se, but you had a partner, which is in effect an investor. You are both investors in the company. Um, do you want to share a little bit of your story? And no pressure to, but I, I just felt it was a really compelling uh, uh, a co a compelling piece. And why don't, why don't we pro pop you in here and bring you in as a promote to a panelist? Here we go. Yeah. I mean, I have had investors because uh, a feature film I that I had, that I worked on, um, had executive producers. But the instance you're talking about is having a, an actual business partner. So back in uh, 2007, I partnered up with another professional organizer and we were gonna create, or we did create a series of home organizing videos. And we were driven, absolutely driven by getting this project done. We knew the world needed it. That was 2007. So that was just prior to 2008. And we all know what happened to the economy in the U.S. in 2008. And so we spent a quarter of a million dollars um, of our money and some other people's money. And it, by 2014, we weren't making any money. And I got out of the company. So... It, it's a, you know, over a drink in Mexico, I will share the entire story to anybody who wants to listen because there's a huge series of uh, life lessons. But thankfully, at the onset, um, my husband and I did some financial stuff. So we took my name off our house. I had no part in any of our family assets, which was important to the story. And uh so we did that. My business partner and I had all the proper legal documents. We had lawyers who paid a lot of money for that out of our 250,000. And so we had, uh, so we had proper partnerships agreement, partnership agreements. We had the whole, you know, if we ever get divorced, right? The business divorce, what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, and here's, so in the lawyer's office in one day, we, I took my name off the company we shared. She took full ownership and my husband and I signed papers for our new company because in business, you need a company to run your business through. So, so we had to continue. So it was a happy day and a sad day uh, all at the same time. So lots of, lots of life lessons. Like you really need to, um, you need to look at, like John said, who you're partnering up with. So as far as business partners, we didn't have the full picture of what we needed in our company to make it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Elaine, thank you so much for sharing that. And it's a, that's a very vulnerable story. Thank you uh, for sharing that. And I, I feel that uh, uh, it's really important for us to share these stories with each other because yeah. guess what? We can save hundreds of thousands of dollars of pain and heartache if we yes. just share with each other. Exactly. And I'm, and I'm willing to share all of the dirty, hard stories and, you know, uh, with anybody who, who wants to listen, you know, who, who really wants that advice on, yeah, I'm thinking of doing this and, and you know, what, what do you think? And I'm all about strategic alliances and, and the right partnerships, right? The mm -hmm. right um, mm -hmm. investors, the right partnerships, uh, those sorts of things, but you really need to have your legal stuff in order. Um, okay, thank you so much. I really uh, much appreciate it. Let me share, Greg. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Um, I see. Hey, Sav, would you be would you be cool to to share a little bit about your journey um, that you are having right now in looking for investment? And how does this discussion um, fit you with with your company in finding the right investors that are you know aligned with the values and you know all the sort of because I I know that you're on a, a very uh, very big, uh, big journey right now. And um, yeah, if, if you're cool to share a little bit uh, with the with the rest, that'd be really helpful. Absolutely. Uh, and, and cut me short because you know, I'm long winded. Okay. <laughs> no, I would never cut you short. And, and the backdrop that you've got in Yosemite there, man, it is just so beautiful. Look at that backdrop. Gorgeous. Well, <laughs> it's crazy beautiful out right now. Everything. Oh my gosh, man. Are you kidding me? It's like just crazy. Anyway, you know, you know that Toronto has like a foot of snow right now, and we're about to get it tonight. Boy. <laughs> Boy. Okay. 
th- th- thanks for sharing. The thing, the thing I'll share is it's tough. It's interesting. You have to, if you don't have your um, really foot inside what your values, what your mission, your vision is, money can be very alluring for anybody. And the promise of money can look very alluring. And, you know, I'm, I'm old enough now and I've gone through the process that I really have had, um, um, you know, some enough experience to see where my ego can take me to make some choices that will really not be a benefit to my company. Uh, we've been in business for, well, we're, we have our five year anniversary of our new television network, April 22nd. So we're coming up and we've been along the gamut. We bootstrapped everything. We've raised a million dollars, over a million dollars now. And now we're in this new round of $25 million. And it's painful. It's painful. Like everyone wants to give you their opinions about the money and what money to take and what money not to take. And at the end of the day, you just have to look yourself in the mirror and go, does this feel right? Is this the right value match? And you just have to know that if you don't have a good feeling in your stomach, it's not going to turn out. It's just not going to turn out no matter how you try to carve it up. So I, I don't know. We can talk more about that in Mexico because yeah. I've definitely made my share of mistakes. Um, and Greg, can I share uh, kind of our story from last year a little bit? Please, please do, please do. I think it was really good. Greg and I set out to create a partnership last year, um, and we went about it really methodically. I mean, we we laid our books out in front of each other. We started some legal conversations, and it didn't pan out. Like it was really interesting. Like Greg and I have this like complete like brotherhood. We love each other. And then we looked and there was something really, it was just really good. Like it wasn't even a matter of trust. It wasn't, it just wasn't the right partnership at the right time. So I think there's a really good lesson that you can have people in your life who are just ultimate, cool, clear, conscious people. And the timing may be off at certain points. Because I know Greg and I will end up doing something really cool together and the timing wasn't right in that moment. So I think really trust yourself, t- trust your process. Um, don't get overly enthusiastic. Um, you know, don't get overly enthusiastic for starting something that may not be right timed now. Mm. Thank you, Zav, for that. And it's, uh, it's so, cr- and I think when we're in Mexico, we should talk more to others about this too, because um, as an example, like Zav, you are one of, have become one of my dearest friends. And it's, it's really interesting when we're talking, and I, I believe that a lot of other people will have this temptation, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clear something up here in a second, but temptation to partner with friends because it makes sense. The cool thing about you and I is we became friends during the process of exploring partnership, and we became brothers, you know, and uh, you're right, the time has been like this. We're probably closer now than ever going through this. So... I love the story and I, we need to extrapolate this more with, with others uh, when, when we're down there together. And uh, it's, a, it, it's a continuous journey. And that's the thing I want to build with Thumbpreneur is these close knit strategic partnership, friend partnerships, soul partnerships. And that's what we've got. So Zav, thank you so much for sharing that brother. Love much appreciate. And we're going to see you in two weeks. And I got to tell you, I am like, can you see it in my face? Like this is, this is legit Greg smile. <laughs> Not that there's any other one at all, but I'm so excited, man. Okay. Thanks a lot, brother. I'm going to uh, stop your video here. Um, I also see, and remember, I don't know if any, any Americans ever saw Polka Dot Door, but in Canada, we had a show called the Polka Dot Door when we were kids. And the Polka Dot Door is like, I see Jenny. I see Mikey. I see Greg. Well, I see Corey Hartland. Corey. Um, you know, again, I, I didn't warn any of you that I was going to pop you into this stuff, but I'm going to make you a, p- a panelist. And if you don't want to talk about anything, no problem. But you can at the very least say hello. And what I, hey, Corey. Hey, hey, buddy. Hey. What I'm thinking, Corey, is you came from a company, a very large company that sold to Salesforce. Um, and the, and we were in the topic in module three, four, and, oh, sorry, four, five, and six, just talking about the real nitty gritty stuff talking about fails, talking about partnerships, investors, all these sort of things. For someone like you that went through a massive acquisition of, what was it, uh, 300? 367 million, I think. I think it was 27, then there was an extra 50 million in options, I think. Well, yeah, ridiculous. They, there you go. So Big. What, can, can you share with us, now we're, a lot of us are, you know, we're small companies, we're, you know, medium-sized companies. 
what did you witness from being kind of in the mix of that? Gut feel. Yeah, I think Zav said it best. You know, you, you got to feel in your gut, right? Um, and I think transparency goes a long way. Um, being being open and honest. I used to love, you know, in those days when they would just do a weekly, you know, a weekly call to let everybody be on the same page. It might only be half hour, 20 minutes just to do a weekly, you know, weekly Skype call or, or Zoom, right? Just to get everyone around to go, hey, here's what happened this week. Just to try to raise the flag. Um, you know, going through the Salesforce acquisition, that was, I mean, that was wild, right? I mean, you know, they were trying to to fit square hole and a round peg, you know, the difference between CRM and social media. So, I mean, there was a lot of friction there. Um, but the Salesforce leadership had a lot of trust in, uh, in our guys. So it was, it was neat to see that now culturally it was just very different. I mean, you can't really compare, you know, East coast Canadian culture to San Francisco, Silicon Valley culture, right? There, <laughs> They don't quite merge very well. Um, but all in all, hey, they Salesforce saw huge value in our area. They've still got three offices, um, one in St. John, one in Fredericton, one in Halifax, and they're still hiring developers, and they're still hiring sales guys, and they're still hiring customer care people. So it's good to see that Salesforce, even though the, the culture wasn't fit at the start, they saw the loyalty of the people in Eastern Canada and went, no, we want to invest in that. So it was good to see them stick around. That's awesome, Corey. So thanks for bringing that experience to the table. And also in Mexico, like, like Zav is going through, uh, you know, investment right now, like you two should connect and share some of those stories and anybody else who wants to, to talk about that, because it was a special experience to go through such a, a massive acquisition. And I, even whether it's macro or micro, it all relates. And that's what Filmpreneur is about. We got to share these experiences, no matter how big, or how small. So thanks a lot, Corey. And, uh, and we are looking forward to a killer stand-up comedy set on night one. So we already started we, writing. Yeah, yeah, man. Okay, I'm gonna stop your video, brother. And um, so yeah, so anyway, this is just a little bit of a taste of the type of conversations that we can have over uh, over cocktails on the beach in Playa Viva or over, you know, after yoga or with morning tea, whatever it is, however we want to connect uh, in Mexico. We got to make sure that this is high, high, high value uh, experience for for everybody. So, um, one of the things I, I just like to do is go through just really quickly the modules, and just in case anybody has any questions on on each of them. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of blow through the three of them, and then I, I just like to open it up to the floor. If anybody had any questions specifically or any themes, remember this is the time with all of us on the call where we can really extrapolate and bring value. So in the uh, in what I've been calling the episodes, the Filmpreneur episode four, a sense of ending, my key messages were professional services are critical to success. Plan for the end of, of the outset with clarity to make sure there's easy exits that preserve relationships. And that's kind of what we just talked about, isn't it? 50-50 uh, partnerships can be tricky. It's good for one partner to have control. Now, that is a statement that I made. It's not fact. It's just an opinion. When you have the 50-50 partnership, it does work when there's a very special relationship built completely on trust. And uh, we just talked a little bit about that right now, but I, you know, we can open the floor in a few minutes, see if anybody else wants to, to talk about that a little bit further. Uh, for the homework, we talked about self-reflection time. You know, what are our weak points? What, uh, what business skills are we lacking? Uh, I asked everybody to write down three to five of, the, of the, the different skills that we need, whether it's legal, accounting, any of these, or sales. Like, sales is critical. And, uh, again, having Corey uh, come in with us is going to be a lot of fun because Corey, as a, as a, as a lead sales guy uh, at Radian 6 and Salesforce back in the day, uh, I'm sure he's got a lot to share with us uh, in, in that as well, which is going to be awesome. Um, I also, I, I don't know who it was that mentioned some of the sales, maybe it was you, Nathan, um, some of the sales templates. What I'd like to do is, Hemming Sales, we, we literally spent, I think, ten to $15,000 on templates. It was ridiculous. Like, <laughs> I wish I was a lawyer, to be honest with you, with the amount of money that we probably could have made. Anyway, uh, we have templates. And if anybody has any specific templates you're looking for, whether it's MOU templates, whether it's uh, uh, partnership uh, uh, templates or release, uh, you know, location release, personal release, whatever it might be, let me know. And I'll put it up in the resources tab in the course. And if you haven't seen the resources tab, log into the course, look down to the bottom, and you are going to see 
um, a, play, a place called resources. And on there, you can download any of the resources that we put up. Right now, there's one, which is the, the um, Hemings House Employee or Contract Handbook, which we talked about the code of ethics and whatnot. So feel free to take that down, rip it, you know, copy, paste, whatever it is you need to do. Um, it is yours for the taking. Uh, and I want to continue sharing any of those other documents that we have. Um, there's no use of, the, of me just holding on to them myself. Um, any of you filmpreneurs, um, I want to make sure everybody's tight. And these are definitely tight. Episode five, I call this one out of this world. And again, thank you for so many of you going through these. Like, uh, um, it is a lot of content to get through in four weeks. I designed it as a 12 week module, but because we're doing Mexico, I've kind of forced you all to speed through it, uh, and do three modules a week. Some of you can't make it through that and that's totally okay. I want you to be forgiving on yourself, but the whole purpose of this first set of modules, of the 12 modules, is to get dialogue and discussion going. So when we go to Mexico, we are pinpointed understanding the content that we need to cover to make sure you can all, we can all thrive and grow together. So this process is critical. So thank you for going through it. Even if you don't get through all of it, you will eventually get through all of it, which is really, uh, in my opinion, the most uh, important thing is when we get together and talk about this stuff uh, in person. Um, in this particular module, um, we talked about uh, my experience making a television show. Um, and for me, it was going to school, going to business school when I was able to produce my first TV series. And our first TV series was, oh, geez, I can't remember now, but let's say 11, 12 years ago, um, maybe more than that. And I, <laughs> the stuff that we learned, and it was a good budget too. I think it was like 1.2 million or something. Um, for 12 up or maybe it was 10 episodes. I can't remember right now, but uh, uh, I learned so much on that because the broadcaster trusted us for some reason and thank goodness they did, but we were able to partner with another production company. Even though it was our concept, it was our TV show. We partnered with a more experienced uh, production company who led us through, through the experience. And from them, I was able to capture so much information, so many best practices, so many templates, uh, budget templates, all this sort of thing, insurance uh, policies, all these sort of things. Um, so that was a little bit about my story. And I want you to think about that too as uh, evolving storytelling companies. Always look at other companies that you can strategically partner with or that there could be a mentorship experience there. This stuff is critical. You cannot do this on your own. This is not a solo sport, building a media company in this, in this landscape today. A little bit of the stuff that we talked about uh, for homework was what captures your heart? Are you building a company that is fulfilling your soul? You know, and if you're not, why don't we analyze that a little bit? And we've got a little bit of time. We're going to meet together and we're going to, we're going to talk this stuff out and we're going to figure out if you're not doing, if you're not telling the stories that you, that, that are aligned with your, your, your heart and your values, let's figure that stuff out. Um, we're going to get real when we're together in Mexico, uh, just so you know. And, um, also, if anybody is not on mute, if you can put yourself on mute, because I can hear some background noise, I apologize for that. I could have done it myself, but I didn't. Um, I also talked about um, being what you're good at. You know, like for years, I was always striving to work in the scripted world, you know, in, you know, building dramas and comedies and doing the, the whole Hollywood uh, approach to, to film storytelling. But what I realized was I was really good at capturing experiences that were already happening, capturing stories that were happening and sharing them. I, um, it's not that I was a passionate documentary filmmaker from the get-go. I just realized it was quick, quicker turnaround and I was able to do it really well. And I say I, whenever I say I, I really mean we as a team. I have to correct myself there from time to time. We do documentary really well. We're able to uh, capture experiences and push them out. Now, so many times we've been tempted to go back to scripted and try scripted but we're not professionals in that space at all, you know? And if we've got a good thing that we're passionate about, it's in line with our hearts, we understand that it is making positive social change, um, positive impact. You know, someday we might venture into scripted, but we're, we're building a business on what we're good at. And I think that's a really solid point for us to go through. Um, and also in this particular module, we talked about producing uh, great videos that are aligned with the purpose of you as a company, as a CEO, as an entrepreneur, but also in line with the purpose of, you, of the, your clients. Critical points. There's nothing more special when you can work with a client that has alignment in values and you are helping them 
express to their stakeholder group the values that they have through the stories that they tell. And that's the power that we have as professional storytellers, as filmpreneurs. Then the last um, module that we went over, we talked about outsourcing you know, skills that you're not great at. And I, you know, again, for me, it's accounting. Accounting is not my specialty. I am actually really good at spreadsheets and I enjoy spreadsheets, but as far as being disciplined in making sure that I'm spending money in the right time in the right place and we have enough runway, uh, you know, we got payroll, tax deduction, deductions, all this sort of thing, that's a no brainer. Outsource, outsource that stuff unless you're kick-ass at it. I know um, a few of you, Nathan, I think you put on the Facebook that uh, your mother is uh, skilled in this space. That's awesome. As you're starting out, use the people who love you, who are surrounding you, who are, who are close to you to help you with that role until you get to a point where you just have to start dealing with uh, a lot more uh, you know, uh, journal entries and a lot more taxes and a lot more uh, payroll experiences. Then consider going to... Uh, a bookkeeping firm um, or an accountant. You know, there's a difference between having a tax accountant, but then having a daily accountant or a CFO. For Hemings House, we have a CFO, and it's really important to have that high-level accountant brain, the geeky, nerdy accountant brain, over what we are doing uh, as a purpose-driven or uh, creative company. Um, the other things that we like to outsource are legal, of course. Legal. There's a ton of legal. We do a lot of our own templates. What not, but any, anything uh, legal wise, we, we outsource. And there's a lot of like strategy and digital and social media that we outsource as well. We partner with a lot of other great uh, companies that help us with this. We could do this ourselves, we're good at it, but that's not our core competency. So that's another piece I want us to all remember is as we're building our companies, what is it that we're focused on? What are we great at? And um, the homework for that particular episode was we. You know, I, I just wrote it out. I said, your emerging film company will succeed quicker, quicker with the support of a board of advisors. And I said in the Facebook group, list out your dream advisors. They can be specific people or types of people. Think big. Remember, advisors can be from anywhere in the world and from any industry. For Hemings House, we've um, been able to attract a wonderful board of advisors, uh, people from the tech industry, uh, people from film and television, um, people from accounting, you know, from the whole spectrum of the business, you don't want a whole bunch of filmmakers as your board of advisors. It's good to have a filmmaker as a board of advisors. Make sure you have accounting. Make sure you have a legal advisor. Make sure you have someone who's kick-ass at marketing and social. Think about this as you're growing. Having a board of advisors, it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt from time to time, but it is absolutely worth it. And if you start bringing advisors, not only do you need, oh, sorry, investors, I should say, you're not going to need a board of advisors. You're going to need a board of directors, which is a whole different story that I know Corey can speak to. I know Zav can speak to. There's a bunch of other people who are coming. In fact, a lot of people from the Social Venture Network on the Hospitality Suite side, these are seasoned entrepreneurs and CEOs. There's going to be so much great sharing of this high-level uh, business strategy that we can, we can talk to. So I'm going to slow my speech down a little bit here. And I'd like to open it up. You know, I, I just went over three of our, um, our modules that, that we, a lot of us went through anyhow. Does anybody have any comments they want to bring up? Um, let's see here. Uh, just, just put it into the comment, uh, the comment place. <laughs> Is that what it's called? The comment field. If anybody wants to bring something up out of those three modules, whether it's about partnerships or outsourcing, uh, legal, et cetera, um, just let me know. Okay, what do we have, Nathan, about the music release? What do we have here? Uh, this is so funny. Me trying to actually read all the uh, all the chat at the same time. Elaine, you've probably been been listening to the chatter. What what are you seeing in uh, in some in some of the comments that are happening right now? People are looking for some forms, uh, so that's good. And uh, I know at Hemmings House, you guys have a ton of uh, templates. So those are great, and we use them all the time in our projects. Um, another one that um, that uh, comment that uh, Zav had was when, uh, he, and it only went to the participants, so not everybody saw it. And you need Zav to click on to all participants and panelists. So, but he said, I've never had a 50-50 workout. Relationship change, things happen that trigger people's past stuff. So mm -hmm. there's. Uh, 
Success makes a whole other level of the ego show up. Really important that someone has a majority in the partnership. Unfortunately, wish it was different. So that is a great, oh, that's you. a great point. And, uh, and so my, the partnership that I had was 50, 50. And so that was probably not a good thing from the get go was for us to have it divided that way. And we were doing everything in 2007 and eight for all the wrong reasons. So we were totally money driven and, uh, and it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. So, mm -hmm. uh, so that was, I, I, I've seen it work, but it's in such rare special uh, cases. Yeah. For example, I think about innovation with, uh, Roxanne and Dave. And in fact, at some point we should bring one of them on as, as yes. a webinar panelist to say, how does this stuff work? And they've built a, you know, I don't know what the size of our company, but they do hundreds of millions of, of transactions. They've got, company, you know, offices in India and all over North America. Yeah. Um, I'd like to bring them in sometime. If anybody wants to talk about this further, I went through a horrible uh, equal partnership, three-way partnership. It was a great partnership when it worked, but when things started going downhill, you lose friends and you lose, you, you, uh, the stress is not worth it. Um, okay, so that's great. Elaine, thanks for uh, keeping an eye on. on uh, Thank this. you. Thanks for the chatter, everybody. Yeah, and it's funny, I, I'm reading something from Nathan and said, oh, imposter, but I thought you said lobster, which is cool. <laughs> No, uh, somehow they've signed, Will signed in under Nathan, so we'll figure that out. Oh, he did? <laughs> we'll figure it, I don't know how, there's two Nathans on there, so somehow Will got signed in under Okay, Nathan. that's great. So, that, that's he, awesome. He's here. Okay, I'll mute myself now. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, yeah, folks, thank you uh, again for participating. Um, my spirit animal is pink fluffy dragon. It's good chance Nathan said that or Will said it or who knows, but it, it is fantastic to know the spirit animal. <laughs> what we're going to do in Play Viva, we have three nights that we're going to be sharing films. Um, one night is a film called City on Fire that Hemings has produced, but we're not showing it because it's a film I want to show. We're filming it because Katie Wallace is doing a workshop on storytelling and we actually hired Katie as a scriptwriter on that film so she really wanted everybody to see the film before she did her workshop now we thought about sending it out to everybody but they're like you know what why don't we just watch it together it's a 45 minute film so we're going to actually watch that film on the second night and next week we're going to show a trailer of that film just so you can get an understanding now I'm really excited some of you might may have um noticed that I was in uh, Ukraine last week and I was at the International Human Rights Documentary Film Festival for two and, and it was awesome because the festival flew me there and this never happens to me never does a festival fly me to uh to a film festival so this is this is a big treat for me to go to Kiev I was only there for like I don't know 40 hours max and I was there to screen Complicit which is a film that we were producers on the exciting thing about this film is remember we have 15 filmpreneurs and 15 social venture network um, uh, tribe members who are coming together at Playa Viva. And Heather is a documentary director. If this is a first time film, we were able to produce it with her and help her get it through. It ended up, it's, it's ended up playing all over the world so far, rocking it at film festivals. It screened at TIFF uh, in Geneva. It's been at the, um, you know, the Human Rights Festival. It just, it, it goes on and on and on and it's, it's, it's gaining tons of, uh, tons of great uh, accolades. The other really fun thing, and I want you to understand this, is the Social Venture Network. And I'm not, and Zav, maybe in the comment form, you can let everybody know how many members are I'm thinking there's a thousand, might be less. I really don't know. The Social Venture Network has combined with this other offshoot of the social network called the Investor Circle. And what this is, is just a group of really high conscious, soul filled entrepreneurs and business people who care about something bigger than just making profit. But a lot of these people are very well, uh, they're very, they're wealthy people and they're investing in good things. This film is a product of a ton of financial support from the community of the Social Venture Network. So this is why I'm super excited to share Complicit. It's a, it's a longer film. Um, it's in the 70 minute range. So it'll be the longest film that we share when we, when we get together. Um, but like I said, very excited to, uh, to share this with you. Now, I was gonna show you the, the trailer tonight, 
but I think because we got a late start, I might skip that, but I, what I will probably do is send out an email with the trailer in it so all of you can check it out, um, which I think is a really great approach. Um, because it's just, yeah, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful way for us to share something. Now, the other thing I wanted to say too is when we are together, we have an opportunity to share short films as well. So if anybody has a short film on the last night, we might either do it on the last night or scatter it amongst the other nights with the larger films. We'd like to show any of your short films. So for example, Nathan or Tasha or uh, Jean or anybody, I will, anybody else who has the ability to share a short film, let's say it's in the five minute range, seven minute, whatever, just let Elaine know, because we're gonna make a little short film showcase. And like I say, if we have enough, we might make it one block, one evening before we you know, let loose and have a few drinks. Um, or we might just have like a couple opener films be before the features that we, that we screen on the beach. Um, and I'm gonna pass it over to Elaine here in a second, because she's gonna tell us a message, a really fun message, which is, it's Mexico. <laughs> which means all these plans that we have may not work, and that's okay, but we, we've, We've got a really solid program lined up for everybody. Uh, really, really excited to, to, to have us all in one space, learning from each other, connecting, um, and just really, really building soulful, soulful relationships with each other. The, um, uh, so Elaine, in a, in a moment here, I would like it for you if, uh, if you could lead the session on Play Aviva Details with Elaine, uh, short films, logistics, and schedule. I'm just going to read off a little. I'm going to be sending everybody an email in the next 24 hours that is going to have most of this, but I want you to be prepared because I am like a detail person. Big picture and then go down to the details. So there are there's some excursions that, you know, if you have the time and the inclination, We'll be sending out that information. There's a packing attachment that I'm going to send. So the suggestion of things to pack and what not to pack because Playa Viva is an eco boutique eco resort and they have their own soaps and shampoos that are, you know, in tune with uh, sort of how the, uh, I guess the plumbing and everything else will work. So it's, uh, oh, there we go. Start my video. So it's good to have, uh, Good to follow along, right? What they're providing for us. Um, there's uh, there's the mission of Play Aviva, which which uh, they work in local towns. So there's going to be an opportunity to do some community service. So I had an idea today, and there's a list of things we can bring. So I always do carry on luggage, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring like a real piece of luggage, and I'm going to fill it to the brim with all the things I can bring uh, to the kids in the village. And so that's going to be my mission for the next couple of weeks. Maybe I'll take my suitcase and leave it at Hemming's house. And I'll just say, you know, fill this for the kids. And then I'll schlep that. Uh, I'll just check that and it'll make its way there. So packing lists. Um, I'm looking for flight information from a few of you still. And the reason for this is uh, David um, from Play Aviva, he needs to know when you're coming into El Stapa. Am I saying that right, John? I hope so. Anyways, uh, and Greg, am I saying it right? It'll Probably. Oh, I yeah. say Ixtapa. Who knows? We will we'll find, we'll we'll find out. So anyway, so they, David needs to know so that we can get you at the airport. Otherwise, you might be, you know, hitchhiking and riding a donkey from the airport to the resort. So we want to make sure that you have the best accommodations possible. Oh, there's people are chatting. Uh, what are they saying? Glare um, from, so, so, something oh, about us being yeah. white, very white. <laughs> Glare okay, from my bald head will yeah, blind you. Sorry, I'll stay away from the distraction. Lobsters. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and then I'm meeting with the accountant this week for final balances. So I'll hand. We'll. I'll be sending out invoices. Um, there, there's a little something here about the 19% tax bill for Mexico that we were uh, that, that we didn't know about. That we didn't know about. So that comes to about a hundred dollars U.S. Uh, per person. So we'll send out some information on that. And uh, so at check-in, everybody's going to be asked for a credit card, of course, for incidentals. And there's a, a release form that we're going to sign. And then I'm getting to the good stuff. So there's a bar. Um, yay. Yeah. There's a bar. And it's going to be a dollar bar. <laughs> okay, Greg's already happy. So beer, drinks, house specialty, which is their basil margarita, can't wait, sangria, are all one U.S. dollar. 
<laughs> like, like John is hilarious. Greg <laughs> promised it was a dry resort. Hilarious. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> um, can I, can I just uh, interrupt yeah. you for a sec? Um, the reason that's possible is because of the, um, and Rob from the social venture network, hospitality suite side, um, we were able to get enough people together uh, for a few extra dollars. And we pretty much have almost a subsidized bar, which is great. Yeah. Anyway, continue. So, yeah. so dollars pretty good. Um, but a bottle of wine will be prices marked. So if you're a wine drinker, you're going to pay whatever the price is for a bottle. And there's no charge for non-alcoholic drinks. So ooh, ooh, for, smoothies. you know, yeah, smoothies. Um, what else? Oh, so here's a couple of things that David suggested. Carry less cash, right? Because you're in Mexico. Notify your bank and credit card companies that you're traveling to Mexico and here was this was the other thing he said it's mexico and we need to 100 percent go with the flow and because we're on uh we're on uh uh solar power so we could get there and everything is great or we could get there and there might be no power so so we just have to go with the flow um you know i think usually they have pretty good record of of having all the things and and so although you know it is off grid and, and and very unique place like they you know they'll have places for us to do our workshops and screen our films and all that fun stuff then i'm going to ask you for a bunch of details which um which i just need to have and it'll make me feel better knowing that we're down there because i want your contact phone numbers if something happens and then i would love to see your uh a link for your website, a bio, a photo, and, and maybe Greg, you know, we can put this somewhere, right, in the uh, Facebook. Um, links to projects, right? So if we wanna watch some stuff beforehand. Um, I will, I would like to have any medical info. So if somebody gets there and they're on a certain medication, that'll make me feel better. Emergency contact, dietary requirements. Well, we're going to Mexico, there's gonna be a lot of beans. So if you need to bring your <laughs> I, I, and a lot of us are sharing, are sharing living in spaces. Um, there's lots of air, lots of lots of sea breeze, you know, wafting through the tree houses. I've already had that conversation. <laughs> We're gonna know a lot about each other by the end of the uh, by the end of the week. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's too funny. And then what if you have a burning business issue? So that and this is all going to be in this wonderful email that I'm going to send everybody. And I would really like to get it back and you know, within like 48 hours of receiving it, it just makes my life a little bit easier for filling in details because I'm I'm filling in details for Greg and then I'm sending stuff off to David. And we just like production. So this is so the, here's a metaphor for production, Greg. You like this. The more work you do up front, the heavy lifting. When you show up on set, it's all beautiful, right? Amen. So, Amen. Uh, so we're doing a lot of heavy lifting before we get to Mexico so that it is going to be absolutely amazing. So everybody will kind of know the schedule. We have, we have a great schedule for all of our speakers. I'm going to send that information out so you know when you land in the schedule. And if there's anything that you need, uh, we're going to have all the, you know, AV and, and um, uh, we, have a, we have a mic because the ocean's there. We want to make sure everybody can hear when we record that we get uh, good audio, right? As filmmakers, we want to make sure that, yeah, we can forgive bad video. We can't forgive bad audio. Audio. Amen. Amen. <laughs> right? So we need to to have all those things. And then if you have some handouts you want to bring or cards or whatever it is. So I, I just want to make sure that you will all have the most amazing experience of, of being able to learn and uh and take whatever you need from from this time and all the all the incredible people that are coming. It's just and it's so it's so good to see that John is bringing the Costco toilet paper. Um, <laughs> no, it's non compost. It's not compostable. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, listen, Elaine, I, I just want to say thank you, um, and just really, and if, if if everybody's cool, just to go for a few min more minutes uh, longer, because um, I want to introduce you to somebody else here before we close up. I want to say thank you, Elaine, for all that you're doing. And I, this demonstrates, so just so everybody knows, Elaine is not my employee, just so everybody knows. Elaine is a learner, as I am as well. Elaine has followed, uh, has been involved in my business since 2002, 2003, I don't know, as a collaborator, as a, and you've hired us, blah, blah, blah. You got into film, we've worked together. Um, 
so Elaine is, um, it, like everybody else, is taking the course, is a learner, a connector. But she also has offered to, um, to serve all of us in helping in this particular role. And many of us uh, are, are, are making this possible. So thank you, Elaine. And I also want to say my evil little plan here, uh, if you haven't figured it out yet, is Elaine is somebody I like working with because I've gotten to know her. Um, Zav is somebody I want that I that I work with um, because it's, he's somebody I've gotten to know. John is somebody I'm working with because at etc cetera, etc. Cetera, you know Nathan, Will, Tasha, everybody else who we are going to be growing in relationship with. We're going to work together, and and you know what? I'm not going to stop this thing unless unless something else strikes me down because it's not going to take long before we've got 150, 1500 people who get what we're talking about here in changing the media landscape, um, uh, you know, using our gifts uh, and our entrepreneurial skills to make the world a better place through storytelling. Uh, so I just want to honor you with that, Elaine. Thank you so much. Thank and with, you. with that, I'm going to absolutely destroy your video here. Stop. Yeah, stop. Bam. So every week we've been bringing new amazing people to the, uh, you know, to introduce themselves. And Jackie... Uh, I'm giving you a couple seconds, Jackie, just in case, you know, if you want to do this to your hair or anything like this, uh, uh, I'm going to bring you in, okay, uh, allow you to talk. This is so funny. Uh, Zoom says, allow a person to talk. Wow. I, I feel so powerful. Uh, <laughs> okay, so Jackie, hello, Jackie. How are you, darling? Let's, hey. Let's, hey. Oh, your, your backdrop looks amazing. Where are you right now? I'm in Venice Beach, California. At home. Are you, are you at your place? Yep, at my place. It, it looks like you've got this beautiful chair, tree this coming out of your yeah. head. Dining room wall, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Jackie, thanks for coming on. And for the sake of everybody else, I met Jackie with Zav. And we were in Panama in the jungle, like legit in the jungle, uh, met you. And I, I really don't think we got to really know each other until we ended up on the beach. Where was it? Where, where did we go oh, on the beach? I have now. <laughs> Playa Vinal? Playa Vinal, yeah. Close to Playa Viva, but the Panama version. And we had a good surf morning, and we had dancing, and whatever else we did, I don't remember much of it. But <laughs> it, was, it was great. I do remember Zav and I had to drive like 15 hours to get to the airport in the middle of the night. It sucked. Anyway, yeah. welcome to uh, our group, Jackie. Um, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody, and uh, yeah, just let them know who you are and how you're showing up in the world. Cool. Hey everybody, um, I'm Jackie Mosney. I'm originally from San Francisco and I um, went to UC Berkeley and studied environmental science, policy management, and now that I've exited the kind of educational sphere around five years ago, um, I've been living around the world. I lived in Argentina, I lived in Tel Aviv, and I was last living in San Francisco before moving to LA. Um, and working as an entrepreneur, pretty much uh, with tech and in healthcare. And um, one of the things I've always deeply cared about is the environment and preserving and taking care of planet Earth and all the beautiful uh, things that she's given us, such as trees and clean water. And um, I've been fascinated in creating video content to help share the stories that I've been learning and kind of collecting all over the world and from really incredible people. And I'm luckily supported by an incredible peer group, which Greg is a part of, to learn the skills to actually get out there and do that work. Um, I've hosted a lot of events. I moved to Los Angeles to start a kind of activist group called Cannabis Feminist to educate people about the medicinal and healing powers of cannabis. I've been doing that in a community setting, mostly with women. And that has kind of been a launch pad for me to now be creating uh, cannabis friendly and educational content and to really learn about uh, plants as medicine and going once again back to the earth, finding out what we can learn um, from what's already around us and wanting to make content about that. So, fantastic. And um, <laughs> also, we had a, Hemming's House had a producer workshop. Uh, I don't know how long it was ago, Jackie. And I was like, I told you about it. And you're like, I want to find a way to get to St. John and make it to it. When was that? Was that six months ago, eight months ago? That was longer, yeah. Was, yeah. Elaine was there. Um, and uh, you have all the right 
pieces to be an excellent producer. So uh, this is why I'm excited that you're going through this. And I, I hope, I, I know you're a little, uh, uh, just a little bit later into getting into it. Uh, don't stress yourself out. Uh, this, this whole course has been built for 12 weeks. I've compressed it and kind of encouraging people to try to get it all through it before we get to Mexico. But it's a lot to ask, but just plug through it as much as you can, ask questions. This network that we're building is awesome. You already know a bunch of us who are gonna be there. It's, it's fantastic. And just so everybody else knows, um, Jackie has put her hand up to help us with social media while we're there. So we haven't discussed this much yet, but we do want to you know, share with the world what we're doing a little bit. We don't haven't figured out any hashtags or you know, platform. We're probably going to use Instagram and some other things, but uh, it'd be really great. Um, Jackie, anything you want to say on that? Because it's, it's a group effort, but uh, yeah, anything you want to contribute to that for everybody else who's online? Uh, I mean, once we get down there and get started, I'm going to want to be able to use images that other people are collecting also and to share. And um, I think really create like a narrative and a story with the experience in addition to just highlighting awesome things going on. Um, and I want to know what people want to share because I think this could be a great way to, uh, you know, share with the world what they're working on and what they want to continue after Mexico and like a way to keep them accountable. Um, and, you know, beautiful pictures go a long way. So the more of those, the better. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. And I think Instagram feeding with Facebook is going to be the way to do it. Um, and we can also decide how, what messaging we want to do with the hashtags. And I think that could even be like a group effort. Uh, one of the first days to be like, what's on our mind? What do we deeply care about? And how do we keep it like value aligned? Oh, thank you, Jack. I really appreciate you saying that. And let's do that on night one. Really yeah. appreciate it. And uh, Corey just popped on. He said, happy to help on the social side as well, Jackie. So this is great. Uh, and uh, I've been saying this over and over again, Jackie. This is a, a co-creation experience. This is not me as a teacher. This is me as a, uh, a, party, uh, a party planner, bringing mm -hmm. the right people together to learn from each other and to grow. So thank you for what you're bringing to the table. Really appreciate it. And I'm so excited to see you. Me too. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop your video here. And with that, we are going to go to our very last slide. Um, and six minutes uh, past what I promised, so I do apologize. But look how important this uh, slide is. That's it. Enjoy module seven, eight, and nine. Don't forget to engage in the Facebook group. Please do as you go through it. Ask questions. Please do, um, you know, if you can get to the homework and throw it in, it just helps us curate a better event. And there's a few of you who are rock stars, and the rock stars are the ones who I'm making quotes at the beginning of these, uh, these nights. So keep on doing what you're doing, and uh, the, more you, the more you contribute, the more we all get to know who each other are, where we stand, what we're doing, how we can contribute, and how we can partner with each other. So with that, thank you so much to all of you. Um, sending you all much love, and have an amazing evening. And uh, yeah, so next week, we got one more uh, webinar after this, and uh, that'll be the one right before we all head to Mexico. So that's great. Thank you, everybody. Love y'all.